Living in cities has become more and more the norm, and swimming in the sea or sitting on a beach is a vacation dream. But did you know that there are some privileged people, families, and corporations who possess their own islands? Free to use in any manner they want? Many of these are small and have no facilities, and a few, like in the Falklands, are large and desolate and home only to sheep and sheep farmers. But there are some islands that are pieces of paradise, accessible only to their owners and those who they let into their worlds. Here we share with you the stories of seven amazing privately owned islands. Cuisine Island, Seychelles. About 1,500 kilometers away from the African coast, the Seychelles Archipelago boasts some of the most exotic island ecosystems of the world. One of the more notable of these is the Cuisine Island, famous now for its ecotourism. Since 1992, its owners have worked towards creating a nature preserve, restoring the flora and fauna that originally graced the island, including many rare birds and sea turtles. The conservation program is largely funded by an exclusive resort of five exquisitely furnished bungalows, each a few meters away from the beach and surrounded by lush vegetation. No more than 10 guests are allowed on the island at one time, and they are encouraged to be involved in the work on the island, such as planting indigenous trees from the nursery or assisting in the monitoring of endangered turtles and birds. Of course, guests can also enjoy guided nature walks and snorkeling, deep sea fishing expeditions, and adventurous visits to neighboring uninhabited islands. Satellite Island, Tasmania. Most Australians are unaware of the existence of this small rocky island off the southeastern coast of Tasmania, and those who know really want to visit it. When the current owners inherited the island, it housed a defunct salmon farm, but they saw the potential to create an experience of the rugged beauty of the Tasmanian shoreline. They renovated and created options for people to stay, a luxury three-bedroom summer house, a small boathouse where you can see gaze from bed, and a glamping tent that overlooks the cliffs. Guests pay upwards of $2,000 a night to get exclusive private access to the entire island, including the services of an all-in-one caretaker who caters to every need, including lighting fires, driving you around, and harvesting shellfish. The island is also home to a pair of extremely rare white-breasted sea eagles and some hens that lay fresh eggs for breakfast. The ancient fossil-clad rock shelf that surrounds the island is a source of fresh crayfish and oysters, famous world over. And guests can easily find their own dinners, should they choose not to eat the gourmet food stocked in the pantry. Scorpios, Greece this 75-acre island on the Ionian Sea is probably the most well-known island on this list. It became famous in 1968, when its owner, shipping billionaire Aristotle Onassis, used it as the location for his marriage to Jacqueline Kennedy, widow of American President John F. Kennedy. Onassis spent millions giving the island a makeover, importing sand to create beaches and planting over 200 varieties of trees. Great parties were hosted on the island, with some of the world's biggest celebrities in attendance. After Onassis' death, the island passed on to his family, who fell upon tough times. His last surviving heir, Athena, sold the island in 2013 to a Russian billionaire for 153 million euro. While there are plans underway to create a super luxury resort on the island, the legality of the sale is being questioned by the Greek authorities. Little Halls Pond K, Bahamas Actor Johnny Depp was inspired by the locations of his hit movie, Pirates of the Caribbean, and joined the list of the rich and famous who own islands by purchasing this heavenly 45-acre property for $3.6 million in 2004. Filled with lush tropical forests and dotted with six pristine white sand beaches, the island came with several small powered homes for people to live in. What sets this island apart from other celebrity-owned islands is its location within the oldest protected no-take zone of the Bahamas, which means absolute prohibition of all fishing and marine development activities in the vicinity. So Depp and his friends can forever enjoy sailing, swimming, snorkeling, diving, and hiking in an environment as close to perfectly natural as is possible. Lighthouse Grabini, Croatia Set amidst the crystal clear waters of the Adriatic Sea is a rocky island that seems to have come to life from a fairy tale. The Lighthouse Grabini was built in 1872 to guide ships into the charming port town of Drubnovic in Croatia. Today, the old lighthouse has been converted into a modern holiday home with views to die for. Lucky guests arrive by speedboat and have a choice of five bedrooms, a fully functional kitchen, and two gorgeous outdoor patios replete with parasols and sun loungers. Not to mention the seawater-filled swimming pool that looks out into the Drubnovic Harbor, and the nearby shipwreck and coral reef that divers can explore. What a peaceful spot, so near and yet so far from the hustle and bustle of a city. Rangye Island, Thailand 
Just 20 minutes boat ride away from the tourist hotspot of Phuket lies the unspoiled private island that looks too good to be true. The island is U-shaped, with huge beaches on both sides, and has miles of trails through uninhabited tropical forests. There are a few shacks and one shop at the landing beach, which looks towards the mainland, but not much else apart from that. The island is currently for sale, priced at about $160 million. Teddy Aroa, French Polynesia. This group of islets, located about 50 kilometers north of Tahiti, has a long and fascinating history. Initially a vacation spot for Tahitian royalty where kings would fish, feast, and dance, the island was sold in 1904 to a Canadian dentist who used it for his private residence. American actor Marlon Brando discovered the island while scouting filming locations for his film Mutiny on the Bounty, and eventually bought the island. He built on it a small village of 12 simple bungalows made of local materials like coconut wood and thatched roofs, and large seashells for sinks. He even built an airstrip so that the beautiful coral reefs that surrounded the island wouldn't have to be broken. While he didn't spend much time on the island and soon returned to Los Angeles, his Tahitian wife converted the village into a small hotel that operated for over 25 years. After his death in 2004, the island was taken over by a development company that undertook massive operations to create on it a luxury resort and spa called The Brando. Which of these islands would you like to visit? Let us know in the comments below, and do subscribe to our channel to see more of the world's amazing sights and wonders.